Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the Arts for Vets Local Arcus, local, excuse me, Local Artist Spotlight, Arts for Vets North Dakota. I'm Dale Coolis, soon to be joined by Arts for Vets Executive Director Kimberly Fornis Wilson and artist Rob Howard and Senta Gradulewski. If you have any questions for Kimberly, Rob, and Senta, please ask them in the live stream chat or comment in the, wherever you're watching this on the GFBS channels on Facebook or the Arts for Vets social media channels. And even if we can't get to you live, we'll make sure to field the questions off air, get back to you on social media. We want to hear what you guys have to say. For more information on Arts for Vets North Dakota, their number is 701-330-3072, and their gallery is located at 215 North 3rd Street in Grand Forks. And you can find all this info in this episode's description. So. Kimberly, Senta, Rob, welcome. <laughs> uh, how are you guys? This is a, bit, we, a little bit of a delay. We're trying to, we, I know we're kind of joking, Kimberly, a couple weeks <laughs> ago. We're, we're cursed on our recording days. That's right. That's okay. <laughs> we'll roll with it. We got all these creative minds flowing. We can always get the job done. Absolutely. You know it. Uh, Senta, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I know we, we. I'm sure we'll talk about it later. No, I talked to you, I believe, at the Red event and and the Perfect event a couple of times. Rob, welcome to the show. I think I may have talked to you at one of those two uh, events I think too. So, yes. yes, yes. So, Kimberly, I'll I'll, I'll throw it to you to give uh, the formal introductions here to Rob and Senta. Here, why don't you introduce okay. them to, uh, to, to the people watching and introduce us to Rob and Senta. Super. So, starting with Senta right here. Senta is a well-known artist in our community, and she is also one of our board members. She's a veteran, and she has. Uh, she's part of our studio artist clan, which is our eleven studio artists that are throughout the gallery. So she she's got her ha many a hat on at the gallery, and we love her. She encourages others, and uh, she inspires people out there in the community. And Rob, he's uh, he has joined us. What have you been with us for like two and a half years now? I don't know. I make so Rob I do a lot know. of stuff. He probably <laughs> feels like it's like five years, but it's probably more like two. Are, anyway. are we in our second decade? <laughs> yes, we're in our second decade. And so um, Rob, is uh, he's always got uh, great ideas and stuff, so I bounce a lot of things off him. And he is a veteran and an artist, and he's also an author, and he's been in the uh, theater community. So he's Mr. Also a big... Amazing amazing creative <laughs> arts person so uh yeah so we always have a, a, an embarrassment of uh, riches with all of our creative people there so um w going into our new year sent is one of the captains with our studio artists and we really are boosting our studio art nights with it which is every thursday and then once a one saturday a month and so really featuring those artists. So the next time we meet, we'll have two of our studio artists who are current featured artists here with us. And then Rob and I are working on various uh, workshops that are uh, for vets, uh, doing all kinds of really cool creative things. And he and I are on a mission to go out to all the vets organizations and tap dance for them and tell them what we're doing. So. Um, yeah, so that's what we're these two are up to. Well, welcome to the show, Rob, Santa. Great to have you guys on. I know, I don't know if Kimberly told you, I don't know if you caught the first episode. I like to, for the, that awesome introduction, I like to, and throughout the show, I'll be abusing this sound effect button. <laughs> <laughs> Much applause for, for everything you guys have done at, at, for, for, for your veteran background and for, for the art community. So, yeah, this is, uh, I don't know if you caught the first episode, I always like to kick the show off with a joke. So, uh, I, 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 go, I like to keep it art themed. I got this, so many references online for corny art jokes. So, I got one for the whole table here for you. So, we have to see how good, good, good or bad it is. So, here we go. What did the canvas say to the paint? Stop brushing me off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Paul, Paul. Oh, actually, I think we, I think we do got one of those. Yes, yes. <laughs> Paul, did you catch that? Okay. Yay, yay. No, all right. Oh, uh, thumb leaning up. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, shout out to Paul, the producer in the house here too. So, uh, hey, before we j jump into all the the nuts and bolts of your guys' art background and all that. Let's get to know Rob and Senta before the art. Uh, just background, get to know you. Uh, I, I, I know Kimberly kind of gave us a, a nice little veteran background, but 
But uh, Santa, let's throw it to you. Uh, where are you from? Uh, did you Grand Forks area, or I, I think I saw in your bio was it uh, Kansas City? Oh wait, no, no, Milwaukee. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wayne's World. Yes. I, I, I imagine you must get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly just comes from me, I think. Oh but, gosh. You know, Classic there. movie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so Milwaukee. Yeah, so yeah, born and raised in the uh, Milwaukee area. So that's where I ended up joining ROTC um, and then joining the Air Force, which brought me to my first assignment in Cavalier, North Dakota. Well, uh, how long have you been in Cavalier for? Well, I was only there for a couple years, but uh, during that time I met my husband, who is a Grand Forks born and raised um, his whole family's from here. And then I moved to Alabama and was there for a couple years. And then I left active duty and I went to the reserves um, in Omaha for seven or eight years while living in Grand Forks, moved back up here, got married, and now I'm a North Dakota lifer. North Dakota <laughs> lifer, no <laughs> deck. This is home now. Yes, awesome, it. awesome. Rob, how about we'll get to know you a little bit. Now, it's, uh, you're from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that was, so, um, so how long were you in Kansas City for? Well, I was born and raised. Uh, when I was 18, I joined the Navy. Uh, spent the next almost 14 years in the submarine force there. Except for three years I spent in the Philippines on, uh, on shore duty. So, uh, then got out uh, medical discharge and I bounced around a little bit, ended up back in Kansas City for a while, and then <clears throat> we won't go into the circumstances oh, right, of how right. I got up here. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. No, <laughs> there no. was a woman involved, but uh, <laughs> she's gone, I'm still here. So. <laughs> Hey, it, Grand, Grand Forks, it, everyone has their story on how we got here. I'm, I'm born and raised here. I, I, I know I talk to so many other people how they, they wound up in Grand Forks. And it, I, I always find it inter interesting, too, how the circumstances where everyone, how everyone has come here, no matter if they're born and raised here or a loved one or, or, or a job or whatever the circumstance may be. Everyone's life journey is great. And I said before I said I'm not just saying this as just as, as just a throwaway line, but thank you guys so much for your service. Uh, m many, many, many thanks. But uh, uh, so uh, let's uh, go ahead and jump right into the to the art art world. I want to know how did the art bug bite you? Uh, your big or, or well, a big inspiration? I can't uh, Kimberly forwarded me your guys' bio. Uh, Santa, I'll throw it to you. Uh, from what I gathered, it was kind of like during the pandemic there, w working with art with your with your children. Yes. So um, yeah, a pandemic. I mean, we all kind of lived similar experiences during that time. And I was quarantined with my kids, and it was like a perpetual thing. So it was like 30 days straight or something, and I was just bouncing off the walls and just going nuts. And I would just try to keep the kids entertained, and it was still kind of cold and yucky out. And so I was coloring. I'd color with them, and um, yeah, my husband said, hey, you're not half bad. <laughs> and, then, and then they would just say, well, Mom, can you you know, draw a bird. And I was like, well, I'll try. Give me your Crayola paint set. And I had this set um, that my mother-in-law gave me several years back, two years back, and I tried painting something and I hated it so much, I hid it in the closet. I was like, this is embarrassing. And I'm, so I didn't throw it away, but I like hid it away, like out of sight, out of mind, like embarrassed about it. And then I decided to pull it back out. I was like, well, I'll just try. I had some canvases and um, my dad's a big art lover and he kept giving me these tasks. Well, try, you know, Try doing Starry Night, which you see in um, several of my paintings, my different versions of that. You know, and I did the first, like, real, real painting I did was Starry Night behind uh, the Milwaukee skyline. And I started just this getting a collection and taking on more tasks and working and working and working. And then I finally just got the courage to put it out there. And I felt like I was going to puke. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to put this out in public. You know, it's, it's not something I'd ever really done before. Or, you know, I didn't have a history of art. And I put it out there, and yeah, people, you know, had a lot of positive feedback and encouraged me to keep going. So I just kept up with the momentum. I didn't have a job at that point because of COVID. I was working at UND um, as a military contractor, and the contract stopped. So I was like, what the heck am I going to do? And then I had that, and it kind of filled that gap and gave me a purpose other than just the military, it gave me a creative outlet and the ability to use a different part of my brain, which was awesome, even separate from like the motherhood side of like taking care of children. It was like my thing that was just for me. And then I was able to kind of build 
a business out of it and um, through a passion, and it's it's been awesome. Wow, that is such a uh, just the way the part that really really struck home with me is where you're really talking about how. I, it didn't sound like a thing you were trying to get into or that you weren't pursuing, you know, it's just a hobby with your kids and all of a sudden just things just kind of just fell into place mm -hmm. and uh, to kind of how you put like, say, uh, you're, I can only imagine the nerves where you say putting your first work out in mm -hmm. public. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I could relate to that on some things I've done in the past where you're like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm so afraid of the feedback and, and then just to things, just to have things work out. That is yeah. awesome. And it, it sounds like it's just been like a tremendous, like, like you said, an outlet, a, a mental release yep. maybe. I don't know, if, is that a fair, favorite thing to say just to um, help, help out in that uh, aspect? Yes, I mean, it is now. Like I said, initially it was very nerve wracking, but I've always been somebody that's just been like, do it afraid. Um, so there's been lots of things in my life. I mean, obviously you joined the military, just doing, taking these like big leaps. You're like, I'm scared, but just do it, you know, yeah. be afraid and do it afraid. Mm -hmm. And then I, I started to get more comfortable, build more confidence. And then it became a little bit easier. And of course, having the positive feedback and the, the welcoming and the support I've gotten from our community has really helped it, um, become just a complete joy for me. Oh, that, that, that is an amazing backstory. Uh, just, yeah. Congrats on that, and yeah, I, I think that, that that is awesome. Rob, how about your, your your art bug? What was the big big inspiration for your, your catalyst to get into the art art world? Uh, well, let's see. I, I used to draw as a kid all the time. I was the staff cartoonist on my high school newspaper. I took some art courses in high school, and then I joined the navy and didn't really do anything with it. I draw an occasional cartoon to entertain my shipmates or something. When I was stationed in the Philippines, I experimented with oil painting, which I kind of liked, but it's, it's very messy and takes forever to dry. <laughs> <laughs> Did some more, <clears throat> excuse me, more drawing and cartooning, and uh, a few years ago, my uh, significant other suggested maybe I should look at painting as an outlet for my creativity. I had finished my book, self-published my book, couldn't think of anything else I wanted to write at the moment. So it's like, why don't you, why don't you try painting? So we picked up some stuff at, uh, at Michael's and I started and I painted some things to decorate the concrete pillar I have in my cubicle at work. <laughs> and, uh, then I painted uh, the USS North Dakota submarine. Uh, and my intention was originally I was going to try and donate that to the Met Veterans Memorial Park, but I couldn't get a response back from the Parks Department about it. And so I saw Kim at Veteran Veterans it's, in the Park in a couple park. of years ago, mm -hmm. two, two, three years ago now, I mm -hmm. think it was. And I told her about the painting I had done. And, and Kim, we, we'd known each other and met before and... But I told her about the painting I'd done and how I didn't really have anything to do with it. <laughs> and she said, well, why don't you bring it down to the gallery? And I've been painting and bringing things to the gallery ever since. It's awesome. and, yeah. and that painting of the North Dakota now hangs in the Veteran and Military Service Office on campus. So yeah. Yeah. Big crowd claps. Yes. <laughs> crowd claps all around. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's, that's awesome. Wow. Wow. So what, th those are both just fascinating just like inspirations on how you guys got into it and just what, like how things have just fallen into place for you guys so uh you know i the, for uh for, you know rob you kind of mentioned i was going to ask for a kind of a follow-up here uh, and, and for you Santa, as well uh you mentioned oil you, you've worked with in the past Is, uh, what, what are your uh, overall art materials that are would you say are your guys's uh, go-to art materials to work with or, or even your secondary ones like the ones to mix up with right now it's acrylic uh, occasionally I'll use a little bit, especially in water scenes, using a trick that uh, Kim taught me. I'll use a little bit of uh, watercolor for the texture and the, the appearance of it, but it's mostly, uh, mostly acrylics. I do have, some, do have some oil paints that I bought on sale that it's, have them just in case I decide I want to get brave and, uh, and try again with the oils. But <laughs> oh, I love it. Santa, how about for you? That's so funny because I, I don't have, I mean, I have oils that I haven't touched, but I also have these um, pastels that are there just in case with this board that I'm one day I'm going to, do something with those but otherwise yeah just like rob i'm 
I do acrylic. I'm impatient with yeah. the drying process, and I like to move quick. And you can kind of see in my art, it's like kind of a flowy because I just go. I don't have the patience to stop and wait and dry. And I just am like. <laughs> That's the worst. That's the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I got to let this dry. It's uh, kind what of am I like do the, for <laughs> the, the lazy side of me is like, I can't, you know, I don't, I, I just need this to be done. Just need it done now. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not, yeah. not. I'm not waiting for that clock. Wait. It gives me too much anxiety <laughs> to like wait and then try. And, I'm like, I need to get it to a place where I want it before I can stop. I, I really like how you guys both mentioned for the like always got them st stored in a special place. Like this is going to be the special occasion. Is it maybe, maybe like a lazy weekend where you have you, you know, the time? Not like a lazy week where you got yeah. like a lot of time put aside to be like you know your. This is my main focal piece for the year or, or something to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. Bust uh, it out for some something. Maybe we'll coordinate. And we'll yeah. Just go nuts. <laughs> Kim figure out a project. <laughs> right. Kim Kimberly, I, don't, I can't remember if I talked with you uh, la, la, last month about, do you have a, for your favorite uh, preferred uh, art materials to work with? Well, I absolutely teach classes in three areas. I love water media, period, amen. But I also do like collage type of things. So I'm actually uh, teaching classes now with collage, you know, multimedia, basically. That's what this is right here. Oh. And so um, yeah, it's if, just if layers and layers and layers. I, I know we kind of got to just kinda like la people missed last episode. We got both a physical and digital like little mini art creation uh, yes. that uh, <laughs> that all of you will be talking us through. So I'm very looking forward to that. Got a few more questions, though, before we get to you, get to that there. So I know we, we both kind of uh, mentioned it, but in case I missed anything on it, on, on how you got there, uh, how, how did you discover and start becoming parts of Arts for Vets? I know Robbie kind of mentioned how uh, through like the Veterans Park and trying to get your work through there. Was there anything more else to the story about how you started working your way into the Arts for Vets community? Then I harass them. And when she <laughs> harassed me. <laughs> Persistence. <laughs> when, once there's a hook, yeah, then, then they get more requests. Well, so sometimes it, people just need that little, little friendly little nudge, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I, I'm looking for other veterans mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. interact with. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm, I'm also in, VF, in the VFW and the DAV and so I'm looking for other veterans that might have an interest in art that we can get in there and are, are introduce them to it. Are, are some like fellow veterans that you met that either if they have like a vast or maybe just like a just like a casual interest in art or, or do they have both of you found it's it like the most? It's the spectrum. It's people yeah. just who've never tried a thing all the way to people who've shown their work for years and years and are would be considered professional artists. So we have the whole spectrum. I think. The key word when I was listening to Senta is community. Community. You know? mm -hmm. And we do have this one, we're kind of a hub. Uh, most of the community ends up through there one way or the other. And, but our Grand Forks and <coughs> East Grand Forks, you know, surrounding area, commu our, our community is very rich and very supportive. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody is cool, wants to see each other succeed. And that I feel is like one of the best things about the air, our whole area. And then in our at our place um, because we do a lot of different projects that pull the community in you kind of end up meeting almost everybody sooner or later you know either at a show or a class or the studio artist you know and I, so. I, I can only imagine for, for, for all of you when people when, when you introduce them to the arts for vets uh, community uh, that you know uh, regardless of background they're they must must be a huge eye opener to them. Like, wow, this exists in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Have you ran into that kind of reaction from from many people that you've introduced to arts vets over the years? Well, well my, my oh, I'm sorry. My favorite is when people see the work, they go, oh my god, this is a real art gallery. You yeah, know? exactly. Uh, yeah, most people <laughs> think we're we're like doing. Um, like uh, I don't know what you would say, like just uh, hobby classes, but we're really a production gallery, so we have. Every kind of artist, like we have um, uh, tomorrow, we have two artists. One is a, a metal artist and one's a um, stained glass artist. And they're launching off what I said was the Im uh, Doors to Your Imagination project. And so one's a vet, uh, Randy Goodin, who's a sculptor. And then um, Bill Vosicek, who's a wonderful member of our community. And he came in, he goes, hey, do you want me to teach a class? And so we just end up with these beautiful kind of organic relationships. Um, it's really cool. I mean, and what I love is when people hear me talk about it or hear Senta or Rob talk about it, they'll only get it when they walk in the door. And then they go, oh, my God, I can't believe all this is happening here. That is so, that is so, so cool. Just, yeah, just hear people just 
be like, wow, just yeah. th that, that, that kind of reaction. And it's got to be so gratifying for everyone. Yeah. It would just be, you know, have more and more people would just, just be a part of it. Uh, so I, I guess that kind of, kind of is a good pivot for, for like a, a follow up to that is, uh, what do you guys get the most out of, uh, beating the arts for vets communities? Cause is it sharing that, 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 that passion or just introducing maybe just, just like uh, maybe just kind of opening up a whole new, like having people discover like, wow, I love this. Uh, well, uh, Rob, how about you? Well, I like I like being part of the community. I like uh, seeing what other people are doing. I mean, that's uh, seeing what some of the people are doing with watercolors has inspired me to get watercolors. So I have them that I, <laughs> when I get a few minutes, <laughs> yeah, I intend to do something with them. So, uh, but uh, just being there, being part of it, and sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. Collaborating, and collaborating. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, there's a ton of collaboration. One of the benefits that I have, um, like Kim said, I'm also one of the studio artists that rent a space in there, so I kind of straddle the line. I have the Arts for Vets piece because I um, am in the service, but also I'm I rent a studio. Um, the collaboration piece has been very beneficial to me on studio artist nights when I'm working with other creative minds. There are times where um, I get really stuck. I mean, even with we have an upcoming show um, celebrating women, and I was like, how do I do that? I paint landscapes. And the other gals that happened to be there with me, they were like, why don't you focus on, you know, women, the things that women own in our, the businesses women run and, and own in our community. And I was like, Ta-da. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, what a great, a great well, idea. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> like a great hybrid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's perfect. And just having those conversations. And then from the veteran side, you know, you you, you get to interact with people who have um, similar experiences, even though they, they could be, like, vastly different in actual service. You understand the mindset, um, I don't know, the culture, I guess yeah. mm -hmm. um, that you know you've kind of like experienced different things, and it's kind of a, a bridge that. So you have the art, and you have people that kind of understand some of the things that you go through, and the you know the the culture that you've lived, and that's kind of a a, a cool thing too. And then we all get have such different artistic styles, and we mm -hmm. get to share that on top of it. It's just that's awesome. So I think people might misunderstand that it's a gallery that we have a show, and there's you know certain times you can come and see it. But I really like the word production gallery, and we use the word bridge a lot because the thing was all started by veterans and their family members, and the idea was to bridge to the community at large. Mm -hmm. Now, last year, we had si over 600 people. That is not just veterans. Mm -hmm. That is uh, people from the whole community come in and out and participate. Mm -hmm. So you can walk in and see the show, but you can also walk into Senta's studio and see what she's doing as an individual a small business person and then you can go over here and take bill's um you know uh his class in making um stained glass so really it's kind of a little mini mall of all kinds of different creative outlets right there so you'd really h once you walk in you'll see that it's for the entire community but a veteran could also walk in and go cool i can just talk about stuff i want to talk and not have to preface it with anything so mm -hmm. it's kind of a you know we got the whole candy box over there but sometimes <laughs> there's food yeah yes sometimes. we do we always have food there's yeah. always food yes yeah. yes i know i had a couple of the ex exhibits I've, I've been out there there's you guys have always uh, i could vouch for it a, ni a nice a ni nice uh, little a bunch of uh, arrangements there set up there a lot a lot of great great, great eats and, and and like like a mini, i think like a mini kitchen kind of sorts yeah, right yeah there's a kitchen and so like if the ch if it like when i was meeting with the stained glass artist recently the refrigerator is there, and it's kind of home style on a class night. Everybody just can dig around and grab crackers and eat or whatever. But then when we do a show, which is the women's show coming up, it'll be the whole nice. Then we all got to brush our hair and get well, polished. Well, actually, why don't, well, <laughs> well, why don't we segue to that? Uh, I, I I know we kind of got you got some events coming up here. I know Kimberly, you want to talk about here, and and that's a it's called the Inspire Inclusion, right? Is that yes, the one you're Inspire referencing? Inspire Inclusion, and the I'll idea, throw up a flyer here so yeah. people get the details on screen there. So yeah, so why don't you go so, on ahead? Um, it's 
uh, put ERA, uh, Lisa Martinez called and said, hey, you know, we were wanted to do something to celebrate, including, w you know, the day is the International Day of the Women when it opens on March 8th. But we wanted to do something that, again, brought brings women in from all over, or the sub topic of including women in our wherever we're at so that, you know, women feel embraced in this and that. So men are also contributing their art. It is it isn't just women artists. It's for everyone. It's for yeah. everybody. But the idea is to inspire inclusion, you know, bring her in, talk about her, help her, you know, help her be seen, you know, kind of thing. And the art is amazing. It's like all, the entire spectrum. It's going to be a beautiful show. I see and on so there March 8th to the, the end of March. Fund, the, then Mar uh, Lisa contacted us for the location and support. And then the Women's Fund is also the third partner in producing this. Um, uh, so it's amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. A whole yeah. bunch of huge partners, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, oh, so that's it's, awesome. And it's, uh, the work is already rolling in and stuff, so it's pretty cool. And that will be March 8th. Then the show will be up for a month. And then we will segue into the um, – it's led by the North Dakota Museum of Art is bringing Maurice Sendek's uh, wonderful artwork. He's the guy who did the children's book Where the Wild Things Are. Many things, but that's the most – I think that's one top of mind with him. And then I, you know, it starts March eighth, and there's supposed to be like a big opening night reception. That's right? the March eighth. Yep. Yep. That's mm -hmm. with this one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that runs to the end of, end, end, end of and March. And that runs to the end of March. And, and I, then we'll start the activities for the Maurice Sendek. Uh, it's a community wide event that uh, will be produced by like the libraries, and we'll produce something, and um, PAC is producing something at our gallery and stuff like that. Wow, you have all kinds of nonstop things going on. I know you. I think you mentioned it a little earlier in the show, but I know you wanted to elaborate on it more. Uh, doors to your imagination. Yeah. So um, tomorrow, Bill and uh, Randy will be there, and a couple other guys. But doors to your imagination. Um, I a few years ago, I had a vet, and he uh, wanted to tell stories while he painted, and so he did. So we would sit in the park, and I had this old door propped up. And he would just talk in front of this door. And so I kind of dragged that door around everywhere. And when Bill came in, the, um, the uh, stained glass artist, he said, hey, you know what? Wouldn't it be cool if everybody collaborated and made a one stained, beautiful stained glass? And I went, that's awesome. So Randy walks in. He goes, I can do something that's kind of in metals. <laughs> and then I go, cool. And then I turn around, and there's a, one of the quilters said, have you ever thought of putting a quilt in a door, you know, in the window? So I just went, okay, this has got to be a thing. So we're all, <laughs> these doors will be collected and finished and it'll be a community-wide project throughout, you know, up until the fall. And then we're going to find a location and we're going to have the doors to imagination. It'll be a three-dimensional sculptural exhibit. Oh, cool. that, that sounds that sounds super innovative yeah. with the quilts and doors. Oh, my goodness. Quilts, doors. Stained glass, metals, um, yeah, so we can just keep collaborating and then we'll have a beautiful exhibit. And that's kind of how, we, like I said, we like to roll over there. It's organic, we develop it. If somebody's got a great idea, we just want to make it happen. You know, keep that creativity, that production gallery going, so. Now, I know you mentioned, uh, you kind of touched on a couple of classes currently going on. Is there any other, uh, I know, you, I think you mentioned uh, before the show here, uh, uh, maybe some other classes going yes. on that you want to promote going on? So every week on Monday nights from 6 to 8, we have a beautiful writing class with uh, Nancy Devine, amazing, oh my goodness, award-winning author. Love Everybody loves her class. On Tuesday nights, we have myself and Brenda Bomber. We do free open art classes. You can just walk in. You don't have to bring a brush, paint, nothing. Just walk in and we'll have, you know, uh, uh, you can just jump in and learn some things. On Thursday nights, we have our studio artists, so you can come in and meet those studio artists who have their small businesses in there. Six to eight. Six, six to, to eight. Six to eight? The evenings are all six to eight, yep. And what day of the week is that on again? Um, that's on Thursday. Thursdays? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And Saturday is kind of our big bubbling, lots of things going on day, but from noon to five, um, we have cooking class at noon. And then tomorrow, Bill will be working on the doors to your imagination if people want to come and learn about stained glass and add a piece to it. And then in the afternoon um, from 3 to 5 is we have Na uh, Tammy Nadu. She's an amazing Native American bead artist, painter, everything you can imagine. And she teaches Native American bead class. And those are every week. 
whole bunch of things going on mm -hmm. nonstop at Arts for Vets, North Dakota here. And I know we kind of ran through a lot. So if people want to find out more details, I know, would you say best place is your Facebook or, or website? Facebook, yes. Yep. Facebook and then any of us, we all keep posting stuff too. So. Yes. <laughs> All kinds of good things going on. And again, we'll have links in the description for all of this. So if you want to find more details, look in the links in the description for this episode for links to the Arts for Vets Facebook, uh, also their uh, Instagram, Twitter, all kinds of good details. Uh, yeah, so yeah, look in the description in the show notes here for all kinds of links to find out more about Arts for Vets. Uh, any other events coming up to promote coming up here that we didn't have a chance to touch on yet? Well, there will be more um, shows in the coming up. Uh, Robin and probably Santa, she'll get dragged in whether she likes it or not. But we'll be doing, <laughs> we'll be, every uh, July we do a veteran show at the gallery. And um, in the fall, we're going to have our Native American show again in November. And then we also have our beautiful celebration over at UND in November, which is, we are so grateful to be there. But at um, the Columbia Hall, all the art on the main floor there is, is Arts for Vets art. And um, the UND uh, art uh, collections and uh, President Armaka so generously give us that space, and then they always have a wonderful celebration for everybody. And then we'll have Christmas, so there'll be lots of things you'll. There's always something happening. And in the very near future, I will do a plug for the studio artists. We have two featured artists, um, Jenny and Sherry, that are our featured artists in the main room of Arts for Vets, and their reception opening is February 17th. Yes. And that's a s Saturday time. Yes. So, so they, yes, they were, are going to be at the, they'll be the guests at the next chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll see Sherry's, Sherry's a photographer, so you'll see her featured photographs. And then Jenny kind of does this whimsical it's art. Fun. Yeah, very like otherworldly, like mushrooms and She's fantasy. She's magical, and yeah. Oh, yes. nice. It's, so it's, if it's you, totally like a, yeah, two sides of the spectrum. Yes. Totally cool. Beautiful um, creativity. Mm -hmm. and, and they're the featured artists. So if you walk yeah. in the front gallery yep. right now, you'll see them both. And they're totally different artists, but mm -hmm. amazing. Both yeah. of them, you'll, you'll so love it. Come see that. Photographer Next and Saturday. magic magical Jenny. <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds so cool how constantly it's rotated just to keep it fresh so people mm -hmm. would, oh you know it's been a month since i've, I've happened to stroll by ours for best gallery let's take a look it's the eight yeah. all new set of artwork featured yes right. so yeah people people are digging that i think we even have a couple of gals who um come on occasion have their lunch there in the gallery and i'm like well that's cool sure of course so they can just sit and enjoy their lunch in the space and uh, Santa, Rob, I know, uh, is, is any other, uh, for plugs, for, for uh, any, any, any upcoming things for you uh, personally, for things coming up for, for on, on your end, for uh, personal appearances or art, where to find your artwork, find mo out more information about where to find out on, more on your, your guys' projects? Well, I've got, a, I've got a lot of my work at Columbia Hall at the moment. Yes. Kim and I are also working on a class that will be for veterans to introduce them to basic art concepts, drawing, pastels, acrylic painting. Mm -hmm. So Watch any veteran out there that's interested in participating in that should contact us through the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Through the Facebook. There or you go. Or my number. Or, they can text or, and say yeah. they want it, yeah. And people are listening, watching right now. What's, what's, what's your number, Kimberly? Uh, it's 701-330-3072. Yep. There you go. We'll make sure to plug mm -hmm. that again here towards the end of the show here, too. Santa, uh, uh, any other upcoming plugs here? Um. Well, I'll be included in that women's inclusion show. I have three pieces in that show. Um, other than that, you can find I will, I will be doing more women's um, businesses, paintings that I will be releasing in March. Um, so we can stay tuned on that. On my Instagram is where I post most of the stuff. I have Facebook too, but that's Santa Loren Art, and that's spelled like Lauren, but if you have that up at the at the end, Santa Loren Art is my Instagram. And you can follow me and keep up with what's going on there. And I also do share the things that are going around with Arts for Vets. So I'll make sure to get that listed in the description here too. A link to your Instagram here too. So yeah, which is the important thing to remember with a lot of these artists, um, they are small businesses, mm -hmm. so they all have you know we promote them, but everybody has their own wonderful you know they're like stars in the heavens. They've got their own thing too so it's good if you meet somebody here you know in this instance know that they have their whole thing going on 
um, from their own small business too. So yeah, and if you see something on my Instagram that you say, "Hey, I'd really like to see that in person," you can come over to the gallery. <laughs> and it's usually going to be hanging up in the studio, or you can walk by on Third Street and look in the window and say, "Oh, okay, well, yeah, my name's on the window, so if you can see some of the art from there and." inquire well that, that's actually a great great segue here because uh, i think uh, upcoming next we're going to do our uh, kind of our little uh, curation art art mini art gallery mm -hmm. here digital and physical you guys brought in some samples and uh, i know all all these or maybe uh, some of these things or all these things i believe if i remember right uh, could be per, or uh, is your guys art available for purchase at the oh, art yes. for vets gallery mm -hmm. yep yes mm -hmm. so people are walking by like you said santa if you let, 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 they can make, i see they, they got uh, i know from when and I've been to the Arts for Vets in the past, a lot of stuff would be like, oh, cool, I can buy this. Say, <laughs> just get something, strikes a moment. I love this, I gotta have it. <laughs> That's right. Remember, when you buy art from an artist, that keeps them in art supplies. Yes. If yes. you make it do more. <laughs> You're supporting, well, not only are you supporting the art community, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's hey, there's something about, uh, uh, Rob said, have, have you ever have someone just, or, or Kimberly shoot you a, a text or a call, mm -hmm. someone wants, you, you won't believe it, they, they were just walking by, they weren't even expecting a sale, and boom, you know, they bought like so, so many pieces of our, our, our artwork. That's got to be a great sensation, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Never gets old. Nope. It's awesome. But the other thing that happens is you, again, that's another bridging community. So like lots of people start collecting a particular artist and then we had a couple of artists that moved to the cities not long ago. And so people would come in and look for their art and then I would go, okay, here, they're happening in the cities now, you know? So they get to follow the careers. It's a wet, wonderful way. It's a, another beautiful relationship, right? Between the supporter and the artist. So you get to see them grow by supporting them, so. A thousand percent. Mm -hmm. I am with you. So why don't we start things off here? I see you guys brought some physical uh, samples here with you to the studio. Oh. So well, uh, I brought them because to put it in the window. Okay, there. perfect. Yeah. yeah. But I, this was just to stick up to show if, if you wanted to see one of the classes. We don't have to do oh, that. Oh, okay, yeah. I sent stuff of uh, Rob and uh, uh, sent us so you could have them tell about their work oh yep so. yep i got those so should we just jump to the digital yeah. stuff then okay i got mm -hmm. those queued up and hey people are going by the gfbs storefront here in the grand cities mall uh kimberly we got a, we got a nice little thing here where we got easel set up have some nice artwork for for kind of like the, the spotlight for, for for santa and rob for the month here so we're really glad you guys supplied some stuff for us to put in the storefront here for you guys to show just to help promote and all that so i'm going to kick it away here to we've got several samples here i'll kick it off here and uh, and rob i see we got uh, one of your works here so why don't you guys take it away well this is the northern lights and it's uh it's a painting done from a photo that kim had actually posted what solstice two years ago mm -hmm. i think it yeah. was so. <laughs> and i thought you know that would make a really nice painting and so i sat down and this is this is what came of it so in your guys's travels through the military uh have you seen the Northern Lights many times or maybe just a few times? I've only seen Never. them once. Never? Never? Wow. What? I, oh my goodness. I, I only have to saw, drag you out there. I've only saw them once and it was just it was it was something special. But oh man. Gosh, that is that is fantastic. All right, here we go. Next one. Ah, uh, this is uh this is Winstead's restaurant. We used to be a drive in back in the fifties. It's on the Country Club Plaza in Kansas City, and it's a place I go every time I go home. It's when I would come home on leave, my friends and I would always go down to Winstead's to eat. So I still make a point of going there whenever I go go back to Kansas City. Did Did you happen to show them this uh, art when you went in there? One I did not. I actually took the picture that I painted that from Wawa. It was down there last Christmas. I, I got to ask you, what's your go-to dish over there? Uh, it's their double cheeseburger. Double cheeseburger. <laughs> can't go wrong with a good diner burger, right? That's right. And you can appreciate it with this, this photo, but um, you use that um, glow. He's got glow yeah, the, paint uh, on it. The neon so if the paint. light is down, <laughs> you still see the light in the... It's, well, kind of, it's cool. Is it like if you have like an some kind of like a ambient light or a certain spotlight on it really br it makes catches, it pop? You painted it with the, uh, what is that? Uh, it's it's, the neon, it's the neon the neon glow. paint yeah. to represent so the neon light. It does glow. It's You can't <laughs> see it here, but it does glow. It catches your eye. You're going, oh my God, is that got lights on it? Yeah. So while it's cool to see, we got the nice little digital presentation here too. There's It, it definitely goes a step further seeing it in person, yes. suffice to say. All right, next up here. <laughs> This is this is a, a painting from my boot camp photo. Nice. Typical oh, wow. 
standard military photo, the American flag. You can't see how short the hair is because I'm wearing the hat. But <laughs> oh, so, so, so 2023, and so how, how old were you when, when, when this photo was taken, would you say? About? I was 18 when I went in the Navy, and that was in 1982. And so how, how, was it kind of eerie doing a self-portrait uh, so many years later? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's... I remember doing them in middle school. It seemed weird, you know, looking at myself in a mirror on pencil, and yeah, just wow. That, that hey, that, that that is amazing. I love it. All right, here we go. Uh, this was done from a photo I took out of the out of the front front window of my apartment. That's my neighborhood, and it was the first first snow of the year two years ago. I think it was. So, it's got it for, for winter. It, it, winter it, sunset, I think, is what I called it, isn't it, mm -hmm. Kim? Yes. So, yeah, winter yeah. sunset. So. It's so cool when you get that first snow of the year sometimes. It just, like, you walk out that next morning, and there's just be, like, you, while the wall, there may be a part of your mind going, oh, winter. <laughs> there's, an, I mean, there's another part going, you know, you just can't help but take in the scenery and go, this is majestic, right? Mm -hmm. Right. All right, next up. Uh, let's see. This is the USS Tunney. That's the second submarine I was on, and it's off the coast of Pearl Harbor. So, oh, well, it, it's still stationed there to this day. Uh, no, it's decommissioned. Decommissioned. Now. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Oh, so one thing while you're looking at each one of these, look at the rhythm of the brush. I always tell people if you're going to look for your artist and start thinking about an individual artist, look for the rhythm of the brush. Each artist has their own rhythm, so. When you transition from Rob with his rhythm and synthage, you'll be able to pick them out anywhere after you learn to look for that. All right, Sen, is this one of your ones here? This is mine, yep. This is so what do we have here? Uh, this is, yeah, it's kind of a, a newer piece that actually hangs in my living room. I ended up liking it enough that I, <laughs> I wanted it up. Oh, I think I could zoom in a little here. Sorry oh, about that. No, yeah. that's, that's all right. Um, yeah, this one's called uh, Just Stay on the Run. Um, I like I like doing local stuff to my community, but I know that you know like bison and, and buffalo are really really big um, in our region of the country, uh, and I titled it just "Stay on the Run" because I feel like we're getting further away from like these pure scenes of just you know an, an animal out in the wild. In its natural habitat. In its natural habitat. So it's kind of like just, you know. Don't have to see any vehicles or power poles right. in the background. Yeah. Just just, just keep having that pure, like, run away from the chaos and still exist is kind of what I was thinking when I was painting that. And, and is this, uh, part of my ignorance, I'm a, I, I should have stayed at the top of the show. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a art novice. I took a couple art classes in school so the, in okay. the, in the years. So <laughs> I, I don't want to presume, uh, that I, I know the materials you're working with is, but you mentioned acrylics. Yep. Is this acrylics? It's acrylic. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I have just yeah. the way that reflection is going off that, uh, is that, uh, that stream in the background there. That's, oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bigger one. I don't remember what size it is. 30 by 40 or bigger i'm not sure and i Where's i think this starry night i think i remember you showing me a couple i think i was talking to you at the perfect show and you showed me some of your work i remember your your, your arenas and your stadiums popping i'm a huge yes. twins fan so i'm biased so. yeah i have the <laughs> twins painting hanging up in the i have the the stadium the target but, field hanging up there so i remember that popped me but yeah. we got a local favorite here yes yeah, so uh this one was one of my first you can see it's got 2021 on it um so this was kind of a, a nod to the Northern Lights, but kind of the green of the UND color. And I, I do love painting stadiums. I love structures. Um, so I, I've done many stadiums. So of course I, you know, being, being local and I actually got my master's from UND. So it was kind of fun to do the Ralph, which I've, you know, frequented like most people in this community. So, I mean, the original of this one is sold, but I do sell prints of this. This is one of my more popular ones that I that I sell prints of. Gosh, so that it's kind of fun. And he says this is called Starry Night. This is um, uh, Starry Night at the Ralph. Starry Night at the Ralph. Yeah. Well, isn't it something I think uh, is it safe to say we've all been to a, a UND hockey game at the table or 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 at least driven by there at night? 
<laughs> but uh, uh, no, and there's something about coming out of an arena, no matter what the sport is, and it's mm-hmm. nighttime, no matter if the game lost or 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 if it was a, tr- a heartbreaker of a, a loss or an awesome, uh, you know, the thrill of victory, as a adage goes. Uh, and then just coming out of that night, most games get done, and, you know, in an evening or so by the time, and walking out to that, you know, a magical night. Mm-hmm. So, gosh, yeah, I can, I can see where you're coming from with that. All right, next up, we'll do a little zoom in here. Yeah, this one is um, called Beginnings. So this, I actually took a picture, the picture for this, on one of the first spring days, which who knows if it was actually spring, you know, in Grand Forks, it might have been June when the snow melted. (laughs) Um, But it was like the first day that I could take the kids out to the park. And it just felt like the new year was officially starting. The snow had melted. They could start stretching their legs, getting out there going to play, we rode our bikes, one of my kids rode their tricycle, and we parked, and I just stood there, and I thought, yeah, this is... Something, this, there's something here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is this is beautiful. I mean, it's not sunny summer, it's not winter, it's kind of just like the fresh start of the year where we can kind of get out and, you know, dust off the cobwebs and kind of have new new beginnings, and it also represents, you know, kind of that, that childhood you know, but that, in, that childhood play and yeah, the innocence that kind of goes along with uh, That's kid. exactly what I was going to say, the innocence, you know, the childhood na- naivety and all that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, just like, oh, gosh, I think, yeah, you're, yeah. this is bringing back a lot of memories, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think, is it safe to say we kind of had a false tease of it this past week or so here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I still can't complain. It's not yeah, I'll it's take it. Great. Yeah. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. All right, I think we may have one or two more. Oh, wait, no, actually, I think this is the last one. The last. Yep, yep, so... But yeah, gosh, that is, that is fantastic. Yay. That is, we're gonna do a big, <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for for talking us through it. That was fantastic. And again, people can find these and so much more of your artwork at, at the Art for Vets mm-hmm. Gallery on uh, North Third Street, downtown Grand Forks, right across from uh, or right next to the hub and across. Yeah, we share the parking lot with the hub. And uh, if I remember right, across from the Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then the other location is at um, 501 at the at the Columbia Hall which is 501 North Columbia, on your way to the Ralph, stop over at Columbia Hall, because there we are. If I, if I believe right, is if people may be a little intimidated by the sprawling UND complex, it's, it's not that, uh, it's not hard to miss. You can, it's easy to find out. Just driving down yeah. Columbia on your way to the Ralph going north, it's immediately on your left-hand side of Columbia, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the old med school, yep. and before it was the old med school, it was a hospital. Exactly, So a lot yeah. of people know it because I've got somebody I work with that was born there. So. Yes. <laughs> and people ask, is it okay to go in? Yeah, 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 you can just totally go in, meander around, look at the art there, too. So, yeah. All kinds of great options to keep up with you guys and just to check out the many fantastic art pieces you have there. Uh, a couple of follow up questions here from, from, from that artwork there that we've just seen. Uh, uh, now, I, I, since I know you don't know, talk about you know sports arenas and, and, and going to games and all that. Uh, do you find any inspiration while you're at the game? Something about the intangible energy of going to a sports game or maybe at, I, I want maybe relate, I know for me personally, baseball games. So do yes. you find is something about being at a baseball game? Is that, there's something to it for that that affects, for maybe inspires you? Yeah, I love baseball games so much. You know, I, like I said, I grew up in Milwaukee. I went to college at Milwaukee, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. I used to take the bus by myself to the Brewers games for dollar beer, dollar hot dog days. Oh gosh! <laughs> but yeah, I, and even now when I when I go back home, right, I do go to the Twins games too. It's it's harder, you know, living in Grand Forks, a little farther away from sta- the baseball stadiums that I like. But there's just this energy. It's like the whole place is alive. I nope. mean, I feel that in cities kind of anyway. But when you go to a game, it's just so vibrant. The juice, that, yeah. Yes, there's just so much life in these in these events, and I just love it. Now, it, it may be a little. I I brought a friend to a Twins game. I've only been to like two Twins games in person. But I was at, in the cities. Uh, I went with a friend to check out a concert in the cities, and 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 I'm like, oh, hey, why don't we catch a Twins game while we're there? And he's not a sports guy at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, I'll buy the ticket. Let's just catch the first half of the game, like just an hour. And if you're having a rod in time, we'll we'll head out. And like the first inning, he's cracking all these, you know, these mm-hmm. these jokes and just like ah, oh, sports, blah. But mm-hmm. then kind of gradually, inning by inning, I, I could see him mm-hmm. getting a little into. He was starting to ask questions, and I could yeah. just something about it. Yeah. How yes. can you? Not, I mean, yeah. I'm not a sports guy, but I love to go to a ball yeah. game. Yeah. The ball. Yeah. Well, even yeah. I mean, hockey too. Obviously, UND. And my mm-hmm. mom came to visit. She lives in Virginia, and I was like, well, I gotta get tickets to a hockey game. So. We did. 
I brought her, and she, by the end, she was like, I would do this every night, you know? Yes, <laughs> like, but that's, again, the community just, you word, see right? The, and she's like, the, everybody is here. I'm like, yeah, it's like the whole... Yeah. The whole yeah, community can't there really a better again. word. Yep. Than that's that, your community. You know, and, you're and everyone's turning from young thrill. from young to to older, just like everybody is just it yeah. just vibrates. It, is it kind of rela- relatable for that energy you get by going to like a sports game for, for, for anyone at the table here? Uh, for the kind of ener- similar energy for how uh, does that relate to maybe inspiring you for some of your artwork or just like just in oh, the yeah. process of the artwork? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what artists do, right? That's what visual artists do, musicians do, you know, people who are writing plays do, is you capture a moment that really you took the inspiration mm-hmm. in. You're carrying it, and then you present it somehow. That's, and that's the job of a crea- creative And being. for me, being a newer artist, I feel like art unlocked that in me. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like after I started painting, I saw the world, and it sounds kind of cheesy, but I saw the world through a different lens. Mm-hmm. Like, the sky looks different, the w- driving around, you know, from Cavalier down and seeing the f- harvest, um, just how amazing it looks, how the colors look, you know, what n- understanding what the people are doing. I just, it felt like it just, like, opened up this world yes. for me. And so now you'll see me just, like, hopping out of my car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, my goodness. Like, look at that, you know, potatoes growing. <laughs> Do you try, or, like, snap some photos or so maybe, oh, capture oh, the moment? Oh, yeah. You'll see me downtown, like, like laying on the ground trying to get these, because I'm like, look how pretty that sky is, and I need to remember this and save this for later because I know I want to capture this. And it's just, yeah, it totally changed my perspective. R- Rob, have you any 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 oh, si- similar? Uh, yeah, stuff? I've got I've got photos on my phone right now that I've taken because they'd make a good painting. I or just like some chased, of the sun- chased the sunset one mm-hmm. night until I found the perfect place. <laughs> oh heck yeah! <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> With a cornfield as the sun was setting behind a cornfield, and it's like, okay, this mm-hmm. is it. <laughs> Isn't that isn't that is, is isn't that just uh, extraordinary? How you could just be? Oh, I'm just out for a walk. Oh, mm-hmm. oh inspiration! Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've actually had fights yeah. with my husband, going pull over, pull over, and he's like, no, I don't have time, you know. And I'm like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh. and then he does. Now, now he's he's kind of trained because I'll go, and he goes, should we turn around? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I don't drive, so he's. He's got to give that to me, and I have to always give props to Mr. Wilson, Mr. Jib he's great, Wilson. Great dude, he's man. a sweetheart. He's my we'll archer. Get, we'll, more bud. crowd claps. More crowd claps. Yes. 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 <laughs> Everyone's getting he, their props. He he does a lot at the gallery mm. as far as putting people's paintings in frames and cranking this and helping people with that, and he loves it too. And when, if you ever do walk in, um, w- this show the up front room was done by Rochelle. She just did a beautiful job hanging the front room. But most of the show is jib hangs and the out at the uh, UND. And so it's not just the artists and our inspiration, but we have a lot of amazing volunteers that support us and help us, you know, shine too. Big, but big it's team the making it come together. And, and, and you said you guys are you're always looking for volunteers to help out yes. arts or vets, right? Well, that's the fun part because then you get the, the energy from the creative experience, you know. If you start trying to create, you you appreciate creation in general you start to really appreciate how things come together how a plant grows how a sunset happens it really does enrich your life and that's why it's kind of fun to hang out with artists or creators you know because they do give you a totally different perspective and we give each other new ways of seeing that we didn't have before so it sounds like i know you mentioned saturday is kind of like a popular day for just kind of like your free like uh, for, for lack of a better phrase, free time workstation kind of. Yeah. Do you get, mm-hmm. while well, people are just kind of working in their studio spaces or, or wherever mm-hmm. in the Arts for Best galleries, you be able to take a pause time out. Oh, hey, where are you working on it? Just yeah. t- just kind of uh, exchange ideas, topics, uh, or just brainstorm. You get, you, do you guys run into that a lot? Saturdays oh, or any days when you're at Arts for Vets working around? Well, remember, it's a production gallery, so the studio artist can be in there anytime. Mm-hmm. Or if Rob had a project he's working on, that's kind of the membership. Mm-hmm. That's why people like the membership because you know our members can call and say, "Is anybody in the gallery right now? I got a big painting I need to monkey around with." And we're like, "Yeah," and then we have a free art closet so that absolutely nobody who wants to paint has to worry about having supplies. We want to really make sure there is no obstacles to anybody getting in the art scene or music scene because we have musicians that hang out there too. So. We want to make it very accessible to the entire community. That's super important. It's something we literally have an art closet. You can walk in the door, 
grab something, go monkey. Rob so. Santa, have you ever run into when you're just working on it and they're like, oh shoot, I forgot to bring, you know, art supply X or Y. Do you just happen to be, you know, go right into that closet and it's right there waiting yeah. for you? Yep. Yeah. I, I've uh, <laughs> taken and left things yes, at the that's closet. Right. So. Yeah. We I've do that. Donated. Give one, give one, yeah. get one, give one. Take a penny, one. leave yeah. a penny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. if I change whatever brand I'm working with and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just, you know, I'm not going to use this type, but I'll donate it. But I actually work out of my home and I display at the gallery. Um, but I definitely have gone there for framing and gone into the closet and yes, <laughs> use, the, use the drill and some hanging equipment and stuff to help mount um, to frame my art. And yeah, the community has been amazing as far as mm -hmm. um, the frames. Most of them came from mm -hmm. an old frame shop. I asked, did a call out like five years ago. And I just said, hey, if anybody has any extra frames, we want everybody to hang beautifully. And I came out 140 frames were on my front deck. I mean, that kind of stuff. The community's been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, paint comes in all the time. People are super sweet. And these are just folks who know that we um, share and make our, you know, the art world accessible. The community's been amazing. And of course, most of us artists have extra stuff. Mm -hmm. We, <laughs> right. so you know, we uh, all kind of added in there. Mm -hmm. so that's got to be so cool. Where I, I think everyone can. Uh, I, I know that's bringing. It, I have way too many movies and stuff at home. Like I, uh, sometimes I find myself in, like someone says they haven't seen a movie. I've said just borrowing. It, I'm like, hey, have it. Yes, 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 <laughs> is, yes, yes. Is that similar for like the art world? Yes, yeah. Yeah. very yeah. much yeah. so. Very much so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gosh, uh, I got a couple, few final last questions here for you guys before we wind down. Uh, uh, Rob, I noticed on the Arts for Vets, uh, besides the Arts for Vets uh, face Facebook page, there's also the Arts for Vets Talent Share Facebook group. Yes. And I, I noticed you have posts on there, that, uh, a series of posts I noticed. I was kind of looking the last uh, several weeks there, and I, I noticed you have evolution of a painting. Yeah, uh, I like what, what, doing that, where I just take pictures as I'm going. Sometimes I forget, so you'll have a big <laughs> gap in between. But uh, I try and take, I try and take a picture roll, every time I take a break. <laughs> uh, take a picture of it so that I've got an evolution uh -huh. going and you can see how the picture formed. I think that's so, so cool. So you could kind of see it at like the quarter mark, halfway mark, you know, and all yeah. that. That, that, that. And then I know you see the various Arts for Vets uh, uh, group members, they're kind of interacting with you on there too. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's got to yeah, be cool to have that, that instant feedback. Any of the feedback. community can come in on that. That started during COVID because we, Jib and I were running around dropping art supplies here and there <laughs> and then people could, wanted to share and so we started that it's called the Arts for Vets Talent Share, and any community member can hop in and see which artists are working on what. And so it's also another wonderful way for people to share and see somebody you learn by watching other people evolve. So now I, I get a little mixed up sometimes for the way Arts for Vets uh, or excuse me, uh, Facebook groups work. So people yeah. do they join the Arts for Vets uh, Facebook page first, and then that's how they yes. can get invited to the group. So if they go yeah. to the Arts for Vets Facebook page, then they can hop into the group. Yep. Um, yeah, I know. I, I got in there and just seeing just the way you guys ex exchange artwork and communicate on there. That's got to just have another, you know, if you don't have time to make it to the studio, just another way to keep in touch and, and just have yeah. that constant communication. It yeah. works really nice. So we have several vets uh, that you might not realize it, but several vets in the talent share were here and now they're all, all over the place, you know, Minneapolis, Texas, you know, Montana, and they have brought people into that from their new areas. And so it's kind of another cool, you know, organically evolving community that people can go learn and see what people are doing, so. Uh, Rob, I have a, a, you mentioned it a little earlier. I want to make sure just to help just spread the love and promote it. Uh, I know you recently released a book several months back. I think, Kimberly, you mentioned it, it, it coming up when you're on in a GFBS interview show. It was coming up. I think, was it officially, if I remember right, released during it was, it was during like a Grand Forks Street Fair, I believe? Well, or? He, he shared it then. Shared it yeah. then. Yeah. But yeah. he yeah. published I, it a couple so years published ago. Published it during, actually before COVID. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's been, and it's been slow to take off, but <laughs> well, and that's again, the, you know, that's the life of a, a creative mm -hmm. person is you yeah. just keep sharing and sharing mm -hmm. and. But there are copies you can buy right at the gallery, mm -hmm. or you can order it from Amazon, or you can get it in Kindle from Amazon if you prefer that. So it's called Wayward Sun. Wayward Sun. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I, I was kind of, I, I looked it up on Amazon there and just, uh, yeah, appears to be quite the tale. So what do you line people want to know about for all the book lovers out there? Oh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess the elevator pitch, uh, to borrow a phrase. <laughs> the elevator pitch, okay. It's, uh, it, it is a sci-fi fantasy epic. Um, the creation of essentially everything. Uh, well, no, the, the <laughs> creation of, of, of this system. Because as you get into the book, you'll find out it's not everything. It's this system specifically and this planet and all of our neighbors oh. and the, the groups involved with that and leading into the mythologies, early mythologies, um, including, you know, I mean, you've got the Norse mythology, you've got the Babylonian mythology leading right up to the Judeo-Christian mythology. So, All right, so it sounds like if you're into sci-fi, into mythologies, it's going to be. I, I talked to uh, one Art for Vets member. I know that's that does a show. I mentioned him here before uh, on GFBS. Uh, uh, his uh, well, his stage name is Iki Ichabod. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, I know he's a big mythology guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that that would be right up his alley. I think he's he got a, he's got a copy. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, I, I, you know, I guess speaking of media here, uh, I got a fun question here. I, I meant to bring it up on the last episode. I think I missed it. Uh, uh, for uh, Are there any certain art-focused TV shows or social media uh, or movies over the years that, 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 you're, that you like, that you like to give a shout-out to, or current ones or classic ones? It could be Bob Ross, or I know that's probably a cliche example. That's uh, Being an art novice, that's the one I would go to. Uh, just like... The, art tv shows youtube channels anything like that that you'd like to give a shout out to that you guys follow and keep up with uh we'll just go around the table rob we'll start it with you well bob ross you mentioned that i mean that's very calming you just mm -hmm. watch him and it's <laughs> you don't even have to follow along just watch what he's doing listen to what he's saying lowers your blood pressure makes you relax mm -hmm. um i'm currently watching a show on uh tubi i think i'm watching it on but it's it's mysteries of the museum and so it tells, it goes to different museums, and occasionally it's art. Sometimes it's other types of displays. But uh, I love museums. I mean, I grew up. I grew up in Kansas City, so going to the Nelson Nelson mm -hmm. Atkins Gallery of of Art Museum of Art was something I did all the time as a kid. So. And I know, too, you mentioned Tubi. I think it's on Tubi or, or Pluto or, or YouTube. I think there's like a Bob Ross dedicated channel on there as well, right? I believe. Well, that's the... Like 24-7 Bob Ross. Or if you have like I'm a sure Samsung is, Smart but... TV, I know I, 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 I'm like, well, they have like all the included internet channels on there. I know there's a Bob Ross channel, but... Or, or just YouTube, just, uh, just type Bob Ross. I think they got yeah. like the entire archive on there. I don't currently have Netflix, but I know at one time there were a bunch of episodes of bob ross on netflix so gosh yeah have you guys seen that bob ross uh netflix documentary no. they made <laughs> yeah that was a tremendous watch that was that those were i guess you know i'm, I'm not like a super passionate uh it, it, i don't know the x's and o's of the art art world but like i for me that was a huge eye opener a lot very very fascinating look at his career uh but uh uh, Santa, favorite uh art, art channels youtube tv shows movies that you want to give a shout out to i don't i don't think i really any. I mean, my art connections are all um, local and people that I know and like to connect. I mean, obviously, I'm inspired by um, Van Gogh, um, and there was a movie with him. I think it was called Loving Vincent or something mm -hmm. along those lines that that I've watched just because the the story is heartbreaking and beautiful. And um, but as far as like art inspiration, I, I think it's mostly just me connecting with the people around me. I don't. I don't. Oh no, very watch, fair. Yeah, I don't very watch fair. Watch YouTube channels or anything like that. Oh, no. No, I absolutely get that. I understand that. Absolutely. Kimberly, how about for yourself? Well, I tend to really, the whole reason I love the art community is because I'm making connections in person with a lot of people and being creative together, you know? So that's kind of my, my major way of being inspired. But I do, I have had wonderful teachers in the past. So I just turned somebody on to Leanne Jin. He was one of my teachers in Hawaii, and I still use a lot of his te techniques. So I just literally had him up um, telling somebody, go look at his uh, YouTube channel because it'll really inspire you. And he's a watercolorist and a water media artist. So we do all use the YouTube, you know, and the Google quite a lot. The Googles. <laughs> the Googles, yep. Yeah. Um, but I think for from my perspective in this world of online stuff, 
I really encourage people, if you, you know, to get out in the community and be with people, because that, to me, is just kind of the richest picture you can paint. I, am, I, I, I absolutely love that. That is fantastic. So I, I think w I got ready for the final question. I kind of brought it up here for, for, for you all before uh, we started the show to give you a chance to have it ruminate in your brains here well, before, for a bit here before we got to it. So final question. Uh, what's the last noteworthy piece of art that you have seen that has made an impression on you? It could, could be at the gallery, could be just something that you're out and about, like you're talking about just driving by or you just have to stop and take, just take it in. Uh, so yeah, standout piece, last noteworthy piece of art that has made an impression on you. It could be anything. Uh, we'll just go around the table again. Rob, we'll, we'll start it off with you. Well, I'm really impressed with Senta's stuff. Oh. I mean, that's, <laughs> I like to, even when she's yeah. not there, <laughs> I'll go into her studio oh. and just look at the stuff yeah. that she's yeah. done. And, um, and that's, like, you know, I've made the comment, Senta's a real artist. I'm oh, just a guy with a paintbrush. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but like I said, I, I did grow up going to the Nelson Atkins, Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City. And that's that's another place I stop. I usually stop there and then go to Winstead's for lunch afterwards. But they've got one of the original castings of the thinker there. And that's mm. I think at some point I'm going to do a painting of the thinker. The thinker. So. That's that's like one of the ultimate like kind of like the, the 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 project of the year, perhaps. Yes. Yes. Oh man. Maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll use my oils. Oh, the for oils. That. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Now, there you, you now go. we know what those oils are sitting there for. <laughs> oh, Santa, throw it to you. Last noteworthy uh, art that has made an impression on you. Uh, so the last one was actually um, from my friend Becca, who um, sh her art, you know, she goes by Damsel of Distress. So I, yeah, I've always liked her stuff. It, it, you know, she's got a creative totally different than me, mixed media, inks, that kind of stuff. Um, but I went to her show opening at Artwise in the mall, and I just saw this painting that had poppies on it and just being from the military and the way that she had painted it I just was like oh my goodness like it just really spoke to me it was inspiring but like kind of had like a, a sadness and beauty and all of it together and it just seemed like a fit so I bought it um you know so it's cool because I bought it and it's supporting my friend but I wasn't just doing it to support a friend it was like actual genuine purchase yes i was like i really love this and it was the first you know we just moved recently it's still in grand forks but and that was the first piece i'm like i know exactly where this is going to go and it was the first before anything was unpacked i grabbed that and i put it exactly where i wanted it to go and i you know i get to look at it daily and oh, I, I got I it that was there we go more more applause <laughs> that's got to be a special moment when you move you move into something yeah. and like first the first is you know it's kind of oh. cliche but like First thing I'm unpacking, this is going here. That's that got yep. to make it stand out triply so. Yep. I was like, this I I don't know where anything else is going right now, but I know this is going up and I know exactly where it's going. Oh so gosh. That's super cool. That is tremendous. Kimberly, last noteworthy piece of art that's made an impression well, on you. Well, there's two. Um, one is delightful and one is it hits your heart. But Tammy Nadu is our Native American mm -hmm. liaison and a couple years ago I gave her a giant um, canvas and then she would give it back to me and then I kept giving it to her but anyway you really have to come into the gallery because it is I get chills even thinking about it right now makes me want to cry but it's the seven grandfathers um, from Turtle Mountain people and it is you can't quit thinking about it once you've seen it it's Amazing. so I mean it makes me want to cry it's that beautiful it's like an emotion really emotional yeah, it's yes good. It's just striking. And so, and like Rob, I go in there every once in a while and just stand in front of that beautiful painting. And then the other uh, thing that pops into my head right away is Sweet Jenny. She's our newest member, our youngest artist, you know, as far as just joining the art world. And she made two gorgeous mushroom hats. They're so <laughs> <Yeah>. fun. <laughs> like actual physical hats? Yeah. You know, she made beautiful. Yeah. Physical, mu you can wear mine. Oh, and nice. And they are, she's one of the featured artists at Sherry um, Hartwig and, and Jenny. But Jenny made these darling little mushroom hats. And so that one makes me just laugh. Every yeah. time I see them, they're so cute. And I, so I, 
is, is it kind of like i don't I want to come off like i'm downplaying it but it, well I, I think of mushroom hats I'm a, I'm a big video game player so i'm thinking mario <laughs> brothers is it kind of reminiscent of like the the little toads in the mario brothers universe maybe i mean i suppose yeah, yeah. She did, it's like a paper mache yeah and then she painted she worked it and, and, worked and, worked and worked. yeah put like lace under and she there's worked, lace uh, yeah she what do you really call hard. those the little gills Doily type. Well, yeah, oh yeah yeah she, she made like, the gills underneath, yeah, underneath and stuff yeah. she worked oh, really gosh. hard on it yeah they're but they're really every time you walk by you just go Oh, you know, that's you awesome. just smile every yeah. time you see him. So. Oh, gosh, that is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I guess before I hit up the wrap-up uh, info, is there anything I miss at all that you guys would like to uh, give a shout-out to or any other info or plugs I here? I want to give a shout-out to you. Thank you. You, oh. are, you give such good uh, – you make this space so – safe and enjoyable and i really appreciate uh your time here because it really feels great oh to thank you share. that's thank very, you so it's much. very very kind of you i i, I just want to help just like to help support support the arts promote and, and and just make sure raise awareness for this so uh, for everyone watching this here you're uh, you're watching on your phone on your desktop on your tv through an app uh things that could help spread the word for our service community to help support this show like share it, it sounds cliche but you know like share take follow that that goes uh just exponentially helps out this and helps spread the it word does. right and our membership is just 45 bucks a year for all this and, and if people uh, want to inquire about a membership can find it on our facebook page and uh we just you know really appreciate it when somebody throws that in because then that makes all this happen so and, yeah. and then, too, a, another great way to help support everyone, stop in at Arts for Vets, yes. buy, buy a piece of artwork, buy right? Buy a piece of artwork, mm -hmm. yeah. Celebrate our local artists. It's pr we got a really rich, beautiful, vibrant art community, yeah. So I kind of got the wrap-up info again if people want a refresher, and I will, I'll have a lot of this going on our outro here, too, and in the description here, too, if people want to have ways to jot it down to keep up with Arts for Vets. So the Facebook page is, you can just search Arts for Vets, but if you're looking for it specifically, it's the Facebook page is Arts, the number four, Vets Public. Again, in the description, nice little clickable link there. Uh, the location of the gallery is 215 North 3rd Street, downtown Grand Forks, right next to the hub, and across from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Kimberly, I just want to make sure I got this right. The hours I got for Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 8. Monday, Tuesday, oh, Thursday, Monday, 6 to Monday, Tuesday, 8. Thursday, mm -hmm. 6 to 8. And then Saturday, noon to 5. Yes. Yep. All right. Good deal. All right. Hey, Kimberly, Rob, Santa, thank you guys so much. This has been thank awesome. You. Thank Thanks you so much. Us. Appreciate yes. it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, the greatest artist of all time. what's that? Bernini. Bernini. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Paul's giving a shout out to Bernini. <laughs> I love it. We all got our favorite. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. Well, that will wrap it up for the second episode for Arts for Vets North Dakota Local Artist Spotlight. We'll be back, I believe. We'll probably work out the official date once a month here, uh, yes. usually uh, the last uh, Friday of the month here. We're, we're, I think we're shooting for 1230 to be our time. But, you know, yes. due to sometimes in this case, we, we, we are airing it on a Monday, the first premiere, but you can find it any time anywhere afterwards just search yes. arts for vets on your favorite podcast social media apps Thank and you. it should pop up or or on our gfbs pages in our social media it's right there too audio video you name it and I, I, you can find the show on the arts for vets page too right yes absolutely all mm -hmm. right so we'll be back then next time and uh kimberly i don't know i don't want to put you on the spot do you but do you have a, a, a artist lined up that you'd like to give a, a preview for or, or is it more oh, stay yes, tuned for be next sherry time and jenny sherry and, and jenny two featured artists right now all that'll right. be the next time nice yeah. i am looking forward to it all right so we will until then thank you all for joining us today we'll be back then until then take care and goodbye for now